Hi, I have here the latest external graphics card that you can connect to almost any laptop. Inside this small box is the Radeon 7600 MXT, which draws up to 120 watts, providing much higher performance than all current, even the best and most powerful integrated chips. This card is also a great docking station, allowing you to connect up to three additional monitors and power your laptop at the same time. Interested? This is Pavel and you're watching the Tech Maniac HD channel. Welcome! You can watch this video thanks to the support of the GVG Mall platform. If you're still struggling with that annoying activation reminder, go ahead and visit the link in the description. You'll receive your purchased key within a few minutes and all you have to do is paste it into the activation settings. This will not only legalize your version of the system but also allow you to upgrade to Windows 11 without any issues. You can activate and assign your office package to your account just as easily and with the code TMHD you'll get an extra 20% discount which can even go up to 30% during various holidays and events. Stop overpaying and visit the website now. Before we unpack the product, maybe let's talk about what Minis Form actually is because not everyone knows that. Although the name might suggest it, Minis Forum is not an online forum at all. It's a company specializing in the production of compact yet powerful personal computers. They may have only existed for six years, but they've developed and released many really interesting devices, including a few that aspire to be quite powerful gaming computers. For example, they have a model called Neptune with a Ryzen 9 and a dedicated graphics card, the Radeon 6650M. Or take a look at this little thing. The Atom Man G7Ti isn't that small anymore, but it's equipped with an Intel i9-14900HX and a dedicated NVIDIA card, the RTX 4070. There's no way to build such a small PC with such powerful guts on your own, but today we'll talk about a device called the Minis Forum Graphic Adapter 1, which stands for Minis Forum Graphic Adapter. So let's move on to the unboxing. When you lift the lid of the box, you're greeted by the sight of a metal case. It may not be that small, but that's because it already has a power supply inside and all you need to power it is a power cord. The set also comes with an Oculink cable, which we'll use to connect to the computer, and it's 65 centimeters long. On the front of the metal case, there are only two LED indicators. The green one shows that the device is powered on. The blue color means there's an active Oculink connection. As you can see, the design is very simple. The only variation is the roughly one millimeter embossing here and there. On the bottom there are rating stickers, four Torx T9 screws and rubber feet that absorb vibrations. It might not be easy to notice on the recording but although the case appears to be grey, its colour actually leans toward a dark shade of purple. At the top there are cutouts behind which an additional black perforated metal plate is placed. Behind it there's a fan. This one pushes warm air out through the cooling fins at the back but also through one of the sides. Interestingly, there are also holes on the other side which also look like ventilation, but in reality you can't feel any airflow here. Even during prolonged use, you can't feel these areas getting warm at all. On the back, there's one HDMI 2.1 output 2, DisplayPort 1.4 ports. Behind them, we have three 10 gigabit USB Type A ports. Next, there's an Oculink port supporting four peripheral component Interconnect Express 4.0 lanes, and a USB-C port that can be used to power our device. Unfortunately, this port does not support video output. Next, we only have a switch and a 3-pin power socket. As I mentioned at the beginning, inside there's a Radeon 7600 MXT. It's true that this is a mobile version, but it's the most powerful in its family, which means its performance surpasses the mobile RTX 4060. By the way, the video about the WinMax 2 mentions that GPD also offers an external graphics card. It's the G1 model, also with the Radeon 7600 MXT chip. I would even say that their solution, at least in terms of looks, is definitely better. The design is simply simpler and more elegant, but that's just a subjective observation. What matters more is the fact that their solution has an secure digital card reader and supports USB 4 communication. And although it's slower than Oculink, it gives the device that extra compatibility and I definitely wouldn't turn that down. On the other hand, the downside is that the maximum total graphics power for the GPD G1 is 100 watts and in silent mode it's only 60, while the Minis Forum Graphic Adapter 1 we're testing here today easily runs at 120 watts and still does it more quietly than a standard gaming laptop. Unfortunately, I don't have the GPD product for a direct comparison, but I can only guess that Minisforum was simply able to develop a more efficient cooling system. 
So it doesn't get too boring, I'll get straight to the point, it's time to check how much the gaming performance will increase. Although it's worth mentioning here that I use this tiny laptop to perform all these tests. You can watch its full review on my channel, the link is in the top right corner of your screen or as always in the description below. The device may be tiny, but it's a fully fledged laptop with a Ryzen 8840U32GB of fast double data rate, 5 memory and a 2TB NVMe drive. Importantly on the back there's an Oculink port which will let us connect the Minisforum Graphic Adapter 1 dock. You just need to plug in the cable, turn on the laptop and the second graphics card is already visible in Windows. Don't worry, I'll show you later how to connect the tested device to other, standard, maybe even office laptops. So what do I gain by connecting the Minisform Minisform Graphic Adapter 1 to a laptop without a dedicated graphics card? We'll start the tests with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. At 1080p we see a threefold increase in performance. From an average of 50 frames per second, we jump to a completely different level of gameplay at 153 frames per second. Here we also need to note that we're slowly reaching the maximum capability of the processor in this laptop because if we look at the results at 1440p and 4K, we'll notice that the increase is even slightly higher than in the case of 1080p. However, the Radeon 7600 MXT with 8GB of RAM is by no means a system designed for gaming at 4K resolution, but in order to somehow compare these results to those achieved on the integrated system, I performed most of the tests on medium settings, and if there was an option, I used modern upscaling options. Here, Fidelity FX Super Resolution set to quality. As we can see, GPD WinMax 2 offers only 24 frames per second. Yes, it's a bit of a laptop, a bit of a handheld, so let's not bite off more than we can chew. It's a portable device that runs on battery. In fact, when playing on a television, we can set Fidelity FX Super Resolution to Balanced Mode or even Performance Mode, which will give us even more frames. But even in Fidelity FX Super Resolution Quality Mode on the external card from Minisforum, we're still getting 81 frames, which in this type of game is, in my opinion, a beautiful thing. The second title we're going to tackle is Black Myth Wukong, a new and devilishly demanding game. Tests in three resolutions once again prove the superiority of the external rendering unit. At 1080 per resolution we get 3.2 times more frames, at 1440p it's three times more, and in 4K we maintain 3.1 times more FPS. I tested Cyberpunk 2077 using the preset settings for the Steam Deck. They are optimized for playing on a small screen and definitely provide a pleasant visual experience. The only thing I changed here was switching the default Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.1 to version 3.0 but I left frame generation turned off. As you can see, these settings are already quite demanding for the laptop itself, but after connecting the eGPU, you could even play in 4K if you really wanted to. And sure, we only have an average of 51 frames here, but in 4K, you can easily switch the upscaling from balance to performance, or even turn on frame generation, which will let you maintain noticeably higher frame rates. I tested Fortnite on the only settings recommended by eSports players, which is performance mode with view distance and textures set to epic. Here we can see that at 1080 AP, even in open areas, the bottleneck isn't the graphics system. As you can see from the metrics, the external Minis Forum card isn't working hard at all and draws between 40 and maybe even 50 watts. In closed locations it can even run at just 20 or 30 watts. The advantage of this is that the Minisform Graphic Adapter 1 is almost silent then. At 1440p the external card still only worked at full power occasionally, but it was already holding steady between 90 and 100 watts. Only 4K fully loads the Radeon 7600 MXT. Here we see 170 frames, which is 3.7 times higher than what we get on the integrated graphics. In the review of the GPD WinMax 2 I mentioned that it doesn't handle the Witcher 3 very well. This is clearly visible in the tests conducted here again, adding an external graphics card is absolutely necessary in this case. On medium settings at 1080p we get 81 frames per second. The value seems really nice, but keep in mind that we're not actually limited here by the power of the Minis Forum box. This card is only loaded at about 70 to 80%. Power consumption also fluctuates between 70 and 90 watts. Going higher at 1440p we have four times the number of frames generated. 
4K still won't be very playable, but it's worth noting that with the Minisforum graphic adapter, we have 4.5 times more frames per second than what the integrated system was able to deliver so far. With that in mind, I have a few thoughts about the device we've tested. Well, as we all know, gaming laptops are bigger, thicker, heavier, louder, and above all, no matter what, a lot more expensive. Because of their very hot components, they also break down much more often. Burnt motherboards and fried graphics cards are not exceptions at all. Oh, so many owners of such laptops have commented under my videos that the motherboard had to be replaced every three months. Just imagine how much stress and hassle that is with service centers. On the other hand, if we can get a relatively inexpensive but reliable laptop, it will be lighter, quieter, the battery will last all day, and we'll still have money left to buy an external graphics card. Sure, you can't really connect it on a train or a plane, which is definitely a real drawback, but it's much more comfortable to play on a television or at your desk enjoying a much bigger screen. Personally, I'm still in love with the GPD WinMax 2 and since my review, I've played on it more than I did in the previous three years combined. It's a wonderful little device that makes traveling more enjoyable, but when I'm at home, well, I prefer the comfort of playing on a big screen. And this is where the solution proposed by Minisform really works great. Of course, a lot depends on its price, so in the description below, I'll leave a few links to the best stores. You can check the price later, but I think the manufacturer would like us to use the Minisforum Graphic Adapter 1 mainly in a horizontal position. After all, this is the only place where they put rubber feet. However, I personally prefer to keep this device upright, so I decided to check if that makes any difference. So I did two 35-minute Fermark runs, comparing the temperatures of the GPU, the hotspot, and the video random access memory. The green color below indicates the average fan speed throughout the entire test. And as you can see, it basically doesn't make any difference. In the vertical position, we even have a slightly lower average GPU and video random access memory temperature, but a bit higher hotspot. In short, if you like keeping this little box in a vertical position, I don't see any reason against it. I performed all the tests using exactly this configuration. The GPD was connected to the Minisforum Graphic Adapter 1, which in turn was connected to a 32-inch 4K monitor where, as you can see, the gameplay was displayed. But is it possible to play like this on that small screen without any additional external display at all? Technically, yes, but it doesn't really make much sense. I'll try to explain it as simply as possible. Well, the four-lane connection is already on the verge of being a bottleneck for the Radeon 7600 MXT. After all, all communication between the processor inside our laptop and the external graphics card takes place through that little cable. If we want to send the already rendered image back the other way, that is, back to the screen of our device, it happens through the same connection and as a result, the communication speed between the processor and the external graphics card will suffer. At least that's the theory, but I'll show you how it works in practice. Fermark opened in a window on the external screen generates between 160 and 170 frames per second. If we slowly move the window to the laptop screen, we can see that the performance drops drastically and lands around 100 frames per second. Maybe it's not 20, and yes, you can still play like this, but it's still a colossal loss of performance. That's why, if you want to play, you should only do it on an external monitor. During that time, the laptop screen can be used for anything else, as long as it's not graphically demanding. Okay, now let's talk about how to actually connect such an external graphics card. If your device has an Oculink port, well, it's very simple. You plug in the cable, turn on the device, and in Windows you can already see two graphics processors. You don't need to install anything, you don't need to switch anything. Simple, right? Although here I have to add that I did encounter some problems at the beginning. Well, I don't know if it was Windows fault or the advanced micro devices Radeon software, but a few times when I connected this device, it just didn't work. Fortunately, now I know that all you have to do is go to the Device Manager and in the Graphics Cards tab, manually disable and then enable the 7600 MXT card. The Advanced Micro Devices software can throw up an error window, but that's it. After that, everything works perfectly. After restarting Afterburner, we'll also get all the statistics. If you want to download a ready-made overlay for free, feel free to visit my website in the computer section under Diagnostics with MicroStar International Afterburner. You see how many cool things you can find with me. Remember to click the like button under this video, leave a comment, and of course, subscribe if you haven't already. But let's move on with the topic of connecting. Some time ago, I reviewed a device from the brand NBook, a very interesting invention because it's solid and really cheap with two screens. 
One is 16 inches, the other is 14. A link to the full material will appear in the top right corner of your screen, and as always, you'll find it in the description. However, what sets this laptop apart is the fact that there's an 8-lane Oculink port on the back. It's true that the Minisforum Minisforum graphic adapter one only has four lanes, but you can use a special cable here that splits the eight-lane port into two four-lane ports. So you see, even with such a cheap work laptop, using an external graphics card, you could also turn it into a gaming machine. The link to such a cable is also in the description. Alright, but what if you have a standard laptop that doesn't have an Oculink port? Then a cable or adapter comes to the rescue. You install something like this into the M.2 slot. It may not be the most elegant solution, but what's important is that it works. However, make sure that the slot you want to use actually supports the Peripheral Component Interconnect Express bus. If you need help with this or anything else, I'll be happy to help you in my Facebook group Tech Maniacy HD. The link is also in the description. I invite everyone to join.